Hi, everybody. It's uh, meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Uh, for those of you who are new to my uh, YouTube channel, welcome. Uh, I'm uh, a meteorologist with Fios One News uh, Long Island and Fios One News New Jersey. And uh, I'm also uh, occasionally on WPIX TV in New York. I've been working in and around the New York area for the last uh, 30 plus years uh, and uh, also uh, heard on local radio stations over the years as well, including New Jersey 101.5. So just a quick bio there in case you're new uh, to my channel. We're going to talk about Harvey, which is on the verge of becoming a hurricane. If it's not a hurricane already, the uh, National Hurricane Center new advisory is out. Uh, they are indicating that Harvey is going to uh, strengthen to a major hurricane uh, before it makes landfall. This is going to be potentially a um, life-threatening, devastating event for the Texas Gulf Coast from uh, Corpus Christi north and east. Yeah, I would uh, strongly uh, urge you to, uh, if you have questions regarding, you know, if you're from that area, you, your local government officials and uh, the federal government, FEMA, uh, follow uh, their uh, advice of uh, with, with regards to these things. I'm not qualified to uh, give you specific answers in terms of your own particular area. Now, I lived in Corpus Christi many years ago in the early 80s. I worked at KRIS-TV there, uh, Channel 6 in Corpus Christi. Uh, so I do know something of the Texas coast uh, and, in fact, also uh, worked in the New Orleans for a few years as well. So I know that part of the Gulf Coast um, pretty well. Uh, and uh, I can't emphasize enough. This has the potential to be a, a big one for some people. So let, let, for for a lot of people, for that matter. So uh, the, the not only are we going to be dealing with a hurricane that's going to really just crawl when it gets to the coastline. So you're going to have hurricane conditions lasting for a long time, hours and hours and hours, and it could be 24 hours or more in some places. Uh, with regards to experiencing hurricane force winds when it hits when it heads uh, and uh, heads to the coastline and slows down and possibly stalls. And the other thing is the fact that uh, weather models continue to uh, indicate that this is going to take several days to play out. And uh, we are um, going to uh, have some incredible rainfall amounts of one foot or more from Brownsville all the way to uh, uh, much of southern Louisiana to just west of New Orleans when it's all said and done, depending on how this tracks, if it winds up coming out eventually or does it wind up getting left behind. Either way, uh, East Texas, coastal Texas, <clears throat> you folks are going to be in for a very, very rough number of days. So we're going to get the weather portion of this underway, and uh, it, it, we're also going to talk about the system of the first, I haven't really been paying too much attention to it, but I'm also going to talk about the system uh, that, that may develop along the Florida coast over the weekend and what that may or may not do. And we're going to look at the upper air pattern uh, pretty closely with weather models, the European, the Canadian, and GFS all doing different things because there's so much energy running around. So let me switch over and get that underway, and then we'll come back at the end and we'll chat some more if you have any meteorological questions. So stand by. We're going to take a look now at Harvey as uh, it has become so much better organized in just the last 18 hours. It's astounding how this thing has really uh, intensified very rapidly during the overnight and uh, it's getting completely wrapped up around a tight core of uh, convection right around the circulation center. When I show you the profile of the, of the uh, Air Force Reconnaissance aircraft winds, you're going to see that the strongest winds now have really drawn uh, close to the circulation center. Looks like it's making, you know, it's motion to the north northwest uh, continues. Um, it's, it looks like it's a bit uh, more steady. Certainly it's not that uh, uh, like last night when it was just sort of uh, meandering around and drifting. Uh, but this looks like it's now make, taking its course to the north-northwest. You've got uh, the outflow continuing to expand. We're going. This is going to be a, a, a big event for the Texas coast when it comes inland. I think it is going to come in 
<clears throat> as a, either a strong two or or for or or a three. It certainly has time because uh, we are this thing is, is is moving, but it's moving slowly, and it's going to slow down even more when it gets near the coast. So it may not make landfall until sometime tomorrow night, maybe after midnight. Uh, that gives it uh, a good 36 hours to strengthen, and we're still seeing uh, the pressure rates drop uh, at to two millibars an hour. So that'll easily take it to a Cat 3 if that rapid strengthening continues. Now, one of the pro things that has changed in the upper atmosphere that we talked about yesterday, we look at the water vapor imagery, uh, it it is uh, the upper low. There was that upper low that was sitting uh, in the northwestern Gulf of Mexico that was probably that was uh, inhibiting uh, strengthening to a to some degree yesterday. But it, you notice it didn't really get that far out of the way. But late yesterday, the, the, late yesterday afternoon, uh, the upper low uh, pretty much. Uh, began to dissipate and in fact you can barely find it now it's it's gone and that is creating a, a, a almost perfect condition here for strengthening you have strong outflow from an upper high that's sitting right overhead and uh, that's all you need with these things when they're sitting around an upper high, sitting underneath an upper high uh, they uh, they just intensify fairly rapidly uh, so I would I would suspect that uh, we're going to find this uh, system continuing to strengthen at the rate of one to two millibars an hour uh, for the rest of today, certainly, and maybe even beyond that. Uh, here's the uh, visible satellite this morning. Uh, you can see uh, Harvey really uh, just wrapping itself up. The high clouds are getting uh, closer to the Texas coast. The expanding outflow, uh, it's, it's covering just about uh, the entire western half of the gulf of mexico just a quick note and we'll talk about this also in just a little bit uh you've got the um clouds and showers and thunderstorms from the old tropical waves still sitting off the Flor uh, florida east coast and even in the west coast um there the weather models uh, are indicating that there's going to be some development with this uh going forward um I'm going to be really interested to see how this all plays out. It, it, it's um, it's an odd setup aloft that's happening. You've got a lot of things going on in the upper atmosphere, and uh, we're going to talk about that as well in just a bit. Okay, so here's the Air Force Reconnaissance aircraft <coughs> that fly in that occurred earlier this morning. And here's the center. On the first pass, uh, it showed uh, a 986 pressure. And by the way, and uh, take a visit to uh, that website it's uh, tremendous and uh, you can click on the current storms tab to get the in intensity uh, model uh, guidance on the uh, on Harvey and other tropical systems around the world and uh, if you click on the main menu where it says um, uh, recon, uh, recon reports I believe that's how he's got it worded um, let me just I want to let me just make that clear on the menu where it says right here aircraft recon uh, that will take you to the page where you can see uh, these um, uh, satellite pictures uh, with the actual track of the of the of the storm, and uh, you can see it right here. And if you go to aircraft recon, uh, you will. I'm sorry. If you go to current storms, uh, you'll see all the storms that are around, not just uh, in uh, the Atlantic and in the East Pacific, but in the West Pacific, and even if they show up in the Indian Ocean and down near Australia. Okay. So uh, we're going to come back to uh, uh, the NAM model eventually when we uh, move along. But uh, let's um, let's go to uh, back to the recon here. So on the first fly-in, in the yellows, you see the scale below, 45 to 50 knots, uh, 50 to 55 knots on the northwest side. Then uh, he, they flew through, and in the southeastern quadrant, uh, a band of 55 to 60 knot winds. Uh, they came up and around. You know, extensive gales uh, going out uh, at least 100 miles, and you got 45 to 50 knots uh, out 100 and uh, well over 100 miles east of the center. Here's a, a 50 to 55. Then they looped back around, and then we come back as we get closer to the circulation center. You start to get into these 55 to 60 knot winds, and uh, I think on the next fly through, when uh, when they go out, they're going to find uh, hurricane force winds uh, in this. Uh, given that the pressure continues to drop. 
The intensity guidance, this is the brand new intensity guidance. You can see that just about all the models make this a Cat 1. Uh, a large number of them make it a Cat 2. And now there's about four or five of them. It's hard for me to count with these lines. One, two, three, four, five of these models uh, make this a Category 3 hurricane right before landfall, which will be uh, around 1 or 2 a.m. Saturday morning. And they all, uh, because of the fact that this is going to be such a slow mover, uh, look how long it takes. It takes almost 24 hours for a cluster of the models to weaken it to a tropical storm. And uh, then there are a few others uh, that keep it longer as a um, Category 1 hurricane. So this is going to pound, absolutely pound, uh, the coastal areas uh, in and near where the uh, center of this hurricane moves inland and the model intensity plots are focusing north and east of corpus christi uh, and you can see here is that most of the models are clustered right along uh, the middle part of the texas coast maybe it's a little bit more like the lower middle rather than the upper middle uh, of the texas coast the houston galveston up here corpus christi is right down in here uh, and uh, then you have various uh, tracks after that uh, that loop it, you know, some loop it around back to the southwest and then take it northeast. Uh, others just kind of leave it there. And then some of them turn it around northeastward and eventually take it up uh, into Louisiana. So this was the Hurricane Center forecast from uh, earlier uh, the, uh, where it strengthens it to a hurricane, uh, actually, uh, you know, brings it on shore and then the plots are on top of each other. So it, it, it basically takes it northwest and then brings it back down to the coast on the official hurricane forecast. But you can see the variations that we have uh, with respect to um, the system. So we're going to now look at the NAM model. This is the new NAM. One of the things I want to immediately point out is the fact that um, the pressure is already lower than what the NAM was indicating. Uh, so this is what I mean by try, you, when you use these things as, you know, when you use looking at, at the intensity on the model guidance, on the global model guidance, and on the mesoscale guidance, you have to be really careful because uh, they don't handle it well at all. And it, here, here it goes, moving northwest. We're now at 8 a.m. Friday. So uh, it's offshore, uh, some bands of rain beginning to uh, move into the coast. And then we move on to 2 p.m., uh, where we have a pressure down to, I, I believe that's a 965 millibar. So the NAM has it as a Cat 2. And up we go to a 959. This is at uh, 5 p.m. on Friday. Uh, and we uh, bring it on to land. Uh, part of this, you know, with the chunk of the circulation over land and moving slowly, it, it does weaken it a little bit. And it uh, starts to turn a little more slightly westward or west northwestward briefly, but it brings it inland just north of Corpus, northeast of Corpus Christi, and uh, on the coast, we are now at uh, 11 a.m. Saturday. So this is how much it moves from 11 p.m. Saturday to 11 a.m. Saturday. I mean, if that's barely 30 or 40 miles. So you can imagine the hurricane conditions are going to last for a long, long time uh, in, uh, in the coastal areas where they are uh, close to or certainly northeast of the center. This is going to be uh, quite the pounding that is going to occur for the Texas coast. And the rains that are going to result from this are going to be, um, I hate to even, I, don't, I do not like to use the word catastrophic. Um, because it's such an extreme, but this is going to produce some uh, incredible rainfalls before it's all said and done. Now, the NAM through 51 hours, so we only have out at this point uh, through uh, Saturday uh, 11 a.m., <clears throat> and already there's one foot plus rains that have occurred along the coastal areas beginning to spread inland, uh, So, and we're only at the beginning. Uh, here and by the way, at this point also we have a developing low just east of the uh, central Florida coast with the system that is now uh, over uh, South Florida and out in the northwestern Bahamas. So we'll uh, 
we'll go when we go to the GFS in a second. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Um, so here's the GFS rainfall from the overnight uh, model mid-cycle run. And this is, by the way, through Wednesday night. You can see the huge area of, this is all 12 inches or more uh, in this area. And there's going to be every bit of 20-inch uh, uh, rainfall amounts, if this is correct. And it extends from Brownsville all the way to just west of New Orleans. Um, maybe to about Lafayette or somewhere between New Orleans and Lafayette on there westward, uh, one foot plus rains uh, that are going to fall out of this. So the flash flooding that is, that is going to occur is going to be um, historical, I think, in some places. Um, amazing that you see when you see stuff like this. So let's look at uh, what the uh, GFS did with this from last night, and it was a bit different from its prior run so i suspect that you'll probably see this do something different again first off the gfs in terms of intensity brings this to a category four hurricane just north of corpus christi and uh, there it is on the coast this is at uh, it's a little slower too this is uh, saturday morning uh, at uh, seven, uh, 8 a.m and then it just brings it inland it's it takes it west and then southwest and really all it, it winds up just leaving it there and I think that's what that's because of what's happening with respect to the upper air. Now, when we put the other system on the map in the east, and we'll back this up, you can see where it was on that uh, and on that time frame. What how how that one winds up. So you start to get a developing low over Florida uh, Friday evening, and then it emerges off the Florida coast Saturday morning. Uh, you've got low pressure. It really doesn't do too much with it until it starts moving northward. On Monday and it really doesn't get going until it's it's well east of the Carolinas and it moves it uh, east northeast from here and at that point it strengthens it to a hurricane and actually uh, does take it uh, toward uh, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland I uh, did want to uh, talk about that today because I know a few of you have posted asking me about this so we're going to touch base we're going to touch on that uh, as well but uh, I want to now go to the um, to the European from last night and show you what the European did. The European has been very consistent with this track. That's one thing I got to say about the European. It does, you know, when it locks on to something, it just kind of doesn't vary too much. Again, notice on the European here, folks, that the pressure is way off. Uh, it already had, you know, it, it's way off of, uh, in terms of what it should have been this evening it has a pressure of 997 and we're already at 984 so you know that the pressure is going to be wrong it's not going to get the depth right uh, and it brings it inland uh, northeast of corpus christi brings it to a stall then brings it back out over the coastal waters now at the same time you've got your atlantic low developing here uh, and the european takes it to just southeast of hatteras harvey is now south of Galveston offshore again, and it's likely possible, quite possible that it could strengthen if this track were uh, correct before it moves in uh, along the coast of Louisiana, somewhere between Lake Charles and Lafayette. And there's your uh, system uh, from the Atlantic that becomes a hurricane well east of the Maryland coast. And the European wants to take that east-northeast, uh, passing it south of the Canadian maritime provinces, but uh, the European with the remnants of Harvey takes a low uh, up the Appalachians, up the west side of the Appalachians, almost like a winter type uh, system with the low pressure that winds up <clears throat> going into eastern Kentucky and then redevelops. You can see a second low that it starts to develop in the South Carolina, North Carolina mountains, and it takes it right over um, New York, uh, New York City, Long Island, and Connecticut. Now, right off the bat, I want to just tell you that if this were to happen, this would be a, a rain event uh, a, a, and not much more. Uh, and it might be a, a fairly decent rain event, but it's not going to be anything like what's going on, going, going to be going on in Texas, not even close. OK, uh, just just to put that, take any fear that is out there uh, and, and uh, take it out of the equation. And let's do that right off the bat. We're going to go to the upper air. I'm going to save the Canadian for last, by the way. 
uh, what is going on in the upper air that's causing all this? Well, let's widen out. I'm going to show you the U.S. view. What's really amazing to me is the strength of these troughs that are coming down into the eastern part of the United States for this time of year. <clears throat> when you see the blue, that tells you that the, um, the, the heights are basically the measures of pressure in the upper atmosphere on whether they're above or below normal. And when you see these darker blues, uh, it's telling you that you're seeing well below normal pressure. Now, uh, when we uh, roll along here on the upper air for the European uh, let's uh, go forward. So you've got a trough here. This is from earlier this week. Uh, this is from Tuesday. So this is the trough that it's approaching the east coast that that is uh, heading you know through here in the east now. <clears throat> that trough strengthens and it extends southwestward. So it created this huge weakness here uh, throughout the Gulf states and down into the northern Gulf of Mexico. So that's why Harvey is running into this area of weak steering uh, where it's going to slow down and stall, stall. there's really no push uh, there's really going to be no push for it to move uh, in any particular direction and that's why the models are reacting the way they are now that trough in the east winds up uh, moving out sorry let me just fix that so there it goes and there is Harvey moving inland now here's what the models do with respect to early next week another trough drops in uh, to uh, the Western Great Lakes. This, and here's the big question with respect to the GFS and the European. The European, so here's here's Harvey, okay, and you've got some recognition of what's going on off the Atlantic coast. Um, what the European is doing is it drops that trough down, and it winds up pulling Harvey northward as that trough swings east and yet and then there's another trough that swings down into the western lakes right behind it and why and then still another one as we move into late late next week and that's the one that winds up picking Harvey up and swinging in on up uh, the west side of the Appalachians and northeastward from there so the big question is is the model are these troughs these short waves are they timed out correctly and each model is doing something different in terms of the timing the gfs takes this in and brings it southwestward it suggests the uh, that that this trough is not going to pick this up that this just remains separate here's your atlantic system that gets kicked out to the northeast and to the east northeast so uh the gfs has a different view of this uh in that it drops the it drops a cutoff, but because Harvey does it, it, it somehow misses picking Harvey up, and it winds up being the kicker for the system in the Atlantic to kick it out offshore. Harvey gets left behind and it never comes into the equation, and up and out it goes. And you'll notice as we go through time, the uh, GFS handles the entire uh, area from central and eastern Canada completely different from what the um, European does now since we have these extremes and you know how I feel about the Canadian model uh, let's look at the Canadian upper air because of the fact that uh, you've got these short waves running around and timing is going to be a, a, a question you, you can't really rule completely out that there could be another solution uh, with regards to uh, anything in the east so uh, here's Harvey on the Canadian. And in fact, you know what? Let me look at the surface first because we'll take a look at that. So there's Harvey on the Canadian as a category three. It's a little further south than the other models. Here's your Atlantic system uh, Saturday morning. Uh, now, of course, the Canadian is going to want to spin this up faster, and it does. And it makes it uh, a, a tropical storm over the weekend. Harvey winds up being dragged westward and doesn't even get involved with whatever's going on to the north. But all of the Canadians' energy seems to be focused on the system out in the Atlantic, which naturally it wants to make into a Category 2-plus hurricane and wipe out the East Coast like it always likes to do. And, you know, the Canadian does this on an absolute regular basis. So that part of the equation I'm going to discount. But one of the things that I want to um, emphasize, though, is, again, because of the fact that you've got all this energy running around, the difference in the Canadian is, yes, the Canadian leaves Harvey behind. Yes, the Canadian drops this trough 
down just like uh, the other models, but it reacts differently to the system off the southeast coast, again, assuming that the it's got the intensity right, which it may not. That may be much weaker uh, at this stage of the game. But it drops that set that trough straight south, okay? And that's diff that's that's a big difference here. It drops that tr trough and, and, and cutoff low straight south into Illinois and Indiana, uh, which allows this to just pick up whatever coastal low there is and move it up almost straight north. Uh, you know, again, I want to just say that given the fact that you've got all these weather systems running around, you can't discount that the other models uh, may be mistiming things. And actually, I would suggest that maybe all the models are mistiming their short waves and how this is all going to play out. And uh, perhaps that we may wind up with different solutions altogether when this is all said and done. So we're going to have to really keep an open mind on um, on this and, and how it plays out. Let me uh, give you the wide view so we can uh, give some attention to our friends in the Canadian Maritimes. And I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, just to, just to keep a, a sense of continuity, I'm going to use the the surface pressure with the pressure anomaly and not use um, the one with the uh, precip. Uh, so, you know, here we are. We can take a look at the Canadian Maritimes with the big high. We'll start, I'm going to start back. We'll start with the GFS. Okay, so the GFS uh, with whatever Atlantic system there is <clears throat> uh, brings it up uh, near Nova Scotia and right over Newfoundland as a, uh, probably as a hurricane of some sort and then moves it on along, along to the northeast. Of course, I'm sure there'll probably be some sort of extra tropical transition underway. Uh, that'll mean that the strongest winds and rain will be on the west side rather than on the east side, if that's the case. But the GFS does uh, do that. Now, the European, uh, on the other hand, we'll take a look at the European, and I'll go back to uh, the beginning. So here you have the European. Uh, taking it southeast of Nova Scotia and just southeast of Newfoundland, maybe a little bit of impact in Newfoundland with some wind and rain. Also no notice that the European does have another tropical storm or hurricane in the central Atlantic north of 20 degrees north at that point. Uh, we'll Let's deal with what we got to deal with one at a time. Uh, but you'll notice that um, here's here's Harvey. Now the European again is 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 a little bit further north than all the uh, certainly further north than the other global models with Harvey, and uh, that's why it's able to when, how it times out those upper air systems. It lifts it up to the northeast. So I would imagine that eventually some of that rain. Look at this big tr uh, low that's coming down uh, south of Hudson's Bay with another cold front. So this is going to be another cool shot of uh, rather uh, rather cool air that'll be coming into the Midwest and Northeast if the European is right. And then of course we have the Canadian, which times out everything uh, differently than the other ones. Harvey is not an issue uh, when it comes to bringing something up the East Coast. And here's your uh, Atlantic system that it wants to take North, Northwestward up toward James Bay. So for the Canadian Maritimes, it would say that that's not even an issue for you. And it also starts to develop something way out in the Atlantic. Look, folks, uh, as far as the long range is concerned, you can see how wonderfully complex this is all is this all is and um, and it's and, and is going to remain so for at least the next several days as we watch all of this uh, play out uh, in front of us. Uh, by the way, here's the northeast satellite view that's going on uh, in South Florida on the Bahamas side and um, over the Keys. And of course, you have Harvey continuing to expand in the western Gulf of Mexico. At least we can say in the meantime that the weather is gorgeous here in the northeast and mid-Atlantic states uh, from northern, uh, from uh, looks like from northernmost Virginia and Maryland. There's some clouds down in uh, eastern Virginia and over the Delmarva Peninsula, but it's uh, beautiful for the most part in eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, on up through uh, much of uh, New England except you do have some clouds as you go up toward the north and uh, near uh, Lake Ontario. And there is an upper air disturbance here that's swinging down. There's a reinforcing surge of dry air that's going to be coming here uh, for Friday. Uh, so that might produce a few clouds when uh, that dry air arrives into the northeast before uh, uh, we get uh, that uh, uh, core of that big high that's building up 
uh, out to the north. So uh, we're going to uh, come back now and chat for a little bit. Uh, I know I gave a lot of information here with regards to uh, Harvey, and uh, you can give it, you'll give it another look here on the satellite loop as uh, we uh, take a look at uh, uh, the latest uh, information and advisories from the uh, Hurricane Center. We're going to do that right now. So just stand by while I uh, make the switch over. Okay, so you get the gist of what's going on. I, I think what I want to do at the moment, let me see if I can pull this up. I want to just go back to that uh, water vapor image loop uh, because if it lets me, is it going to let me? Mm, come on. There it is. Okay, <clears throat> if you remember back a couple of days ago, we had this gigantic upper low in the Gulf of Mexico and you know, the remnants of Harvey approaching that and in spite of the fact that you didn't really have ideal conditions uh, for development it uh, managed to come back uh, to a tropical depression strength once it moved moved off uh, the Yucatan Peninsula and notice that upper low is as forecast uh, in 24 hours completely gone so you no, no longer have that uh, wind shear issue uh, going on. And as a result, uh, you can see how impressive it is on the water vapor image loop, how, this, uh, how Harvey is expanding. Uh, I think it's probably a hurricane already. Uh, I'm going to uh, also point out, uh, because of the outflow here, you've got northerly winds uh, in the upper atmosphere blowing from the southeast coast of the United States uh, down over Cuba. So this is where you have your disturbed weather uh, near the Florida co East Coast and extending back to just south of the Keys. So out of this, we're going to have low pressure develop uh, eventually. But its proximity to Harvey here is uh, creating an issue. You have a large upper low out in the Atlantic. You get a lot of dry air out in the tropical Atlantic. But it looks like a, another uh, tropical wave is uh, moving out uh, east of the uh, Cabo Verde Islands. So uh, the tropics look like they're going to stay busy. Uh, we're going to have uh, things to look at uh, beyond Harvey, but of course Harvey's going to be our main focus, focus of attention going forward. For um, the rest of today, uh, you can catch uh, any additional posts on uh, my website, meteorologistjoechaffee.com. Angry Ben has New York City covered on nycweathernow.com. If you lasted this long, thank you. Uh, and if you're new to my YouTube channel, thank you. Uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button uh, and uh, join us on a regular basis. It doesn't cost you a, a dime to subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll get notifications. I've been doing live streams at least once a day. The last few days I've been doing two. Um, and it, it's uh, going to be as time permits, of course. Uh, I will see... Maybe I will get one on after midnight tonight. I was able to get one on last night, so we'll uh, do a quick one tonight uh, to update uh, on um, Harvey. And uh, then, of course, tomorrow we'll get another live stream done around the same time, 11 a.m. Eastern time. And I am off my uh, regular job this weekend, so we will be, of course, live streaming uh, weather uh, with Harvey uh, Saturday morning as the hurricane makes landfall. So just uh, mark down your schedules and uh, just look for uh, any kind of notifications that I'm about to go go on. And I'll put the schedule up on the live stream page so you'll be able to see it. All right, folks, have a great rest of your day. I enjoyed uh, chatting with you and also meeting uh, some new uh, folks that uh, entered the chat conversation today. Uh, welcome to you as well. Uh, we will uh, hopefully see you next time. We'll see everybody maybe tonight after midnight.